from southern Lebanon, from Ansar town, that was once famous with a strong political movement before the Lebanese civil war and during that, due to its geological and political factions uh, diversity. Yet I was uh, born in a Shayah area, which I considered a blessed area for whom was born there since it was a war zone between east side and west side. So uh, the gunshots and rifles and bombardments were, were a daily thing, but also we had a peculiar childhood where we had to jump on rooftops to go from one place to another. Since a child wouldn't favor the old-fashioned way of walking on the streets, we had those small gangs playing with mud and sand. Back then, we didn't have an ill-mannered kid that stays on the street, yet today we have several conditions to do so. Thus, we used to live in harmony with our habitat, which creates psychological and spiritual enrichment. During this Lebanese war, the child would be more mature Probably we should have lived a different childhood, but in my opinion, this is a rich and strong childhood only for who survives this experience. I went to the schools of the area and schools were part of the daily life. I wasn't much of a perfect student um, and didn't get good grades uh, along the years in light of a constant personal changes I had. Art alone was a salvation. It was the only thing that gave a light of hope and the only matter I was able to build upon. So I actually started stressing to draw from that talent to later stop my studies and didn't register in college. But at the same time, I placed in improving uh, my painting and helped in establishing my artistic persona. Of course, uh, there are readings to be done, there is uh, the hands ability and there is the intellectual knowledge concerning art uh, through magazines and, um, and the newspapers that we receive. That's one saw it doesn't complete the When I was uh, four years old, there was an incident uh, that happened. I was at Qasr al sanobar school. A student and I were asked to draw the same drawing. I remember that I drew mine perfectly while the kid next to me didn't. And so uh, I took his paper and drew it from for him correctly. At that moment I still remember how successful I was in drawing and how weak my friend was. I can consider that as the first step in my artistic journey. I had an elusive relationship with art where we drew on walls with coal and chalk. We also used to draw in school aside uh, of our classes. In addition, on the white margin on the side of the magazines and newspaper that we used to receive at our uh, place. Even the papers that, that are available at that time. They were so scarce back then for us, so I used to take advantage of these spaces for such processes. Um, my family and my environment had an effect on my personality, especially uh, um, my brother, uh, Sheikh Muhammad. He used to take me to the mosque where, where there was a religious education alongside my own. And uh, when there's an Ashura marsh and any religious-related uh, activity, uh, I'd be part of it. 
whether at the mosque or the Hosseiniya, and even with my mother when we were young, we used to participate in consolation activities, Aza, and absorb these good deeds gradually from this, from this language that we didn't use to understand because it's an unknown verbal uh, crowding. But we see the effects of these words on the people and the surrounding. All of this helped in placing the Islamic roots in my character. Thus, it was this mixture that created my personality. When I entered the world of art, I was thinking in conformist uh, art from the very start. And uh, that is by, by all what it means. Conformist by committing to the righteousness and close to anything that relates to the conflict of the oppressor and global domination over the, over the poor and third world countries. This idea is not bound by Islam. It's not, it's in our instinct that leads us to protect the weak against the oppressor. I had a conformist art since the start. I began drawing on notebooks that people saw them as if uh, they were uh, my own magazines. And I heard uh, their opinions and laughter and it was my own caricature book. And it was uh, different aspects uh, of my daily life. When I intended to go inside the world of media and journalism, I was about 16 years of age, which is considered an infant and at these times. While at that time, due to the experience of the habitat and wartime, it was considered uh, maturity. I took my drawings and went to the, this newspaper and uh, that one, and until I reached one that accepted uh, to publish my uh, drawings. So it was the first published drawing was in, uh, in Nawasif magazine, which I held in my hand and went to our neighborhood, neighboring uh, tailor and uh, told him, uh, look, this is my drawing. It was true magical feeling and show off that this drawing was one, of the co was one copy in my hand and became part of a magazine to be published for and recopied in thousands. And here my thoughts went further and started pondering who would have seen uh, who would have seen this drawing. Has this certain president or minister or artist seen my signature while viewing this drawing? And I should note that most artists that uh, start with the big signature in comparison uh, with the drawing as if he's uh, actually looking for a space and he might probably place the signature beneath uh, it a small drawing because inside of him he's saying that here I am, I'm officially entering the world of art and by time the artist shrinks, shrinks the size of his uh, signature I mean the more an artist becomes practical in this world the more his style speaks uh, for him and he only needs a small sign that says that he is, that it's his work here on air the character crystallizes meaning that while I'm drawing I'd say that there is no need to draw the fingers in such a manner or I used to draw the facial reaction better with a smiling or sad face but to draw a surprised, angry or content face these details need slight manipulation with the eyebrow or uh, these two lines between the eyebrows or lifting the lip from one side while leaving the other details that, that without a doubt keep moving keep improving with the artist and uh, the viewer wouldn't realize the happening uh, changes here I started using black and white drawings and then drew in Al Bilad magazine and on 18 years of age I decided to do a solo art gallery. It had around uh, 40 to 50 colored paintings with a single style. I drew them in one style. They were placed in Najla Ali Cultural Center. I can consider that moment as a moment where I belong to the world of artists. I got that uh, passport to that land. When you're saying an exhibition with media coverage, I felt that you're being uh, interviewed and asked questions. It means that I have something to say. I have my own opinion. This, this gives you a certain legitimacy in this field. Nothing in the world is seen with the same point of view, manner, or style. Everything we see is related to our ideology, point of view, shape, genes, 
cultures and all of these uh, together even the colors black and white so each person has an opinion regardless if one was an artist or not but if he was so or a poet maybe the eye would remove the painting from a superficial level into analysis the artist always questions why, where to, what happened, where was this matter. There's critical thinking for the artist that surpasses historical facts. From here, my art, my artist, aside, was observing the Hosseini conduct and listening to it. And I would say that this part, when it's said, as if he was saying, I think that he was saying that Abbas was saying this sentence at that moment. You are rereading history in your own cultural way. The moment of right and wrong is not that sentence. Al Hussein wasn't a place of humiliation, God forbid. As someone, as some people would say, uh, and if he pleaded for his horse as if he wants to live. This was said one day to incite emotions, but with the growth of the notion of uh, prowess, nobility, a bravery, Hossein wouldn't say such a sentence and would be not used uh, to incite emotions. This ideology that an artist has because he wouldn't be satisfied in an area that doesn't uh, have any mistakes. Since uh, the Hossein that I know is uh, a different person from what another person would know. And in my opinion, he is the better Hussein, and it's the better image that should be placed in the collective memory. And there's a lot of modifications to give this noble and beautiful field of the Imam's characteristics and uh, specific moments in Muharram. When I used to go to listen with my mother, people would say, uh, listen, or also they say to the woman, the reader. There was uh, this strange ritual how would this atmosphere of crying be concluded by a piece of biscuit? How would you give sweets in such a sad mood? Also, Al Qasim's wedding was part of Ashura's ritual. Imagine that a kid is uh, listening to this wedding story and uh, surrounded uh, by women in black dresses. There is sadness, candles, and sweets being served. This is an intellectual contradiction because the mind realizes that sad moments have an atmosphere and joyful ones as well. How does Al Qasim's wedding and funeral be at the same time? Here I say that this is a complicated stock, but at the same time, it's very rich if we would read it calmly later on. I uh, was uh, following up uh, on Ashura artistically. First of all, visually, we know that there are certain artworks such as a famous uh, portrait of Al Hussein alayhi salam. Of course, it was created by collective uh, memory that searches for uh, a handsome face and places all characteristics of nobility to bravery to magnanimity with the green turban. I am not against that, of course. Let these values uh, that we believe in be embodied in the Imam and this, and this sacred personality and give it in uh, such a way. When that image was widely and strongly spread, here in the artist's mind, we say, why, would sh why should we stay uh, in a circle that's practically repeating itself, whether in the story, the art, or uh, the literature uh, as well? There are phases. There are phrases that are uh, constantly being repeated and uh, reset. Whereas the Hussein story deserves to be mentioned in different manners and ways because we are in front of a historical epic that is filled with values and beliefs and the humanitarian moment in which right fought wrong. In addition to the sadness and sorrow in all of its facets to reach the captivity and before that the killing of the infant and burning of the tents and holding the head of the Imam on the spear, all of these moments make a compiled human tragedy, a true tragedy and not a fiction written by Homer or uh, any other uh, historical epics. This is a real moment with no exaggerations added. On the contrary, as much as we try to simplify this, ep this epic, we only try to cling on the edges of this great incident.
I started to unleash my mind from direct incidents and battles. I wanted to find uh, the symbolism where art and literature are players in this uh, field of symbolism. From here, I was searching for a centralized thought to, uh, to launch towards a series of paintings. So I drew 37 uh, ones on cardboard with simple tools such as uh, Chinese ink, wooden and wet crayons and a few acrylics but without a formative mixture of colors. We know that artists uh, mix blue with green and adds a bit red and has gradients, cloth falls and uh, places lights and shadings but I went towards a different area in history where I used al Wasiti's art, the Islamic artist that used to decorate silk carpets and draw on its margins using one-dimensional uh, images without using shadows, cancelling the existence of light and shade. Even uh, in the architectural and dimensional perspectives uh, of painting, the person would stand here next to next to him the horse and above him uh, the castle and the door without realizing who's in front and who's behind the breakage of architectural and artistic space in terms of uh, lights and shades we all get we all got it from uh, alwasiti this premier artist from here, I wanted to borrow this art. I wanted to draw this minimal dimensional painting and scars in elements di diversity. Later on, at some time, Abu Sabhi Atina we showed up in Syria and he is an intuitive person, an intuitive artist that resembles those who draw on walls when people are from pilgrimage or who plays Ramadan Karim but has ha but has half a talent but this intuitive paint painter was discovered by a few easterners and he had a light shed on him and his work became a foundation the late lebanese artist rafiq uh, sharaf was inspired by this form of art and became famous uh, from it where there are always two dimensions a compilation of symbols through the horse the sword the saddle the mustache and the veiled woman uh, Hilmi Atturi appeared in Egypt with this intuitive art that talks about the Islamic culture and heritage. I wanted to take a scoop from here specifically. I wanted to start from a painting that had a certain identity that re resembles what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the desert and an event that happened over 1400 uh, years ago. I wanted to enter this field for a purpose of proving my artistic identity. From that, I was repeated. There was repeated symbolism in my painting, from the horse to the tent and the illuminated head of the Imam Hussein, as well as the arrows, the spear, the sword, the shields, and the decorations found on the shields and the sword's blade or its handle. In addition, uh, on the tents uh, with certain colors and uh, shapes, I wanted to place this decorative imagery which is found in Islamic art, whether in castles or mosques, uh, where this spiritual Islamic dimension is found in this artistic field. I scooped from here in an intention to simplify where it was found in the painting. It, it didn't take uh, hours to be drawn, but only a couple of hours. It was uh, sort of a trial and uh, they were done. I published this painting on my Facebook account, a social media platform. I was utterly surprised with the amount of interaction of these people with the painting. And I received messages that people were astonished uh, that they saw uh, Ashura for the first time from this angle and the Istakal from this side. It was a real support and uh, one of my friends abroad asked me why aren't these artworks in an exhibition? I replied uh, that it's costly and needs a follow-up and logistics but she supported me greatly and she was ready to assist me in any of these mentioned details. Details. And so it was, and all of my work is related to my friends' uh, support that wouldn't have known without, without the world of social media, which uh, is like a sword with two blades that could be used for righteousness or uh, mischief. Practically, I drew only one painting. This is probably a trial painting for testing. 
Yet the surprise was that I was able to draw an adequate painting balanced with all elements of decoration and spirituality in a surprising way. I felt as if I discovered some chemical substance that has all of these abstract aspects that was mentioned during uh, this episode. As if all what's lurking beneath the skin, the skull and the mind is ready to be placed in a certain area and on a specific level. Here I decided to draw an entire collection. It was uh, at first only a single trial, but then it became a decision to have a collection of paintings ready to be in an art gallery. I drew these paintings on three backgrounds, black background or black paper, desert-like orange background, and a sand-colored background that resembles the sajda we use for prayers, which is uh, from uh, Husseini soil. I chose those three colors intentionally and not randomly. I don't want to embody all what happened in Karbala because the visual, conceptual, and photographic art happened where several artists drew Al-Abbas uh, near the river while bringing uh, water to the camp and uh, arrows were reaching him and there are who drew the horse and some drew the military formations one's army and another's army and the imam's army in the middle this happened and as I said I don't want to repeat what has happened before the art's purpose is sometimes releasing the incident from its stable time being as if it's frozen and uh, reviving it in paintings. Thus, these artworks were free from saying, what do I say here at this moment? At some points in time, the imam's head was soaring alone in the sky as if the turban was flying winds. Uh, this is f not found in reality, but this deep and noble and supreme moment in history deserves to be reread from a spiritual and artistic manner that has depth in, readings, uh, in reading these elements. I drew familiar symbols in the painting. Uh, it's uh, easily understood that uh, the horse in a moment uh, of ailment, yet pride, while probably its hair is uh, burning. There's a moment where arrows are raining over the horse while it's revolting, its uh, color is red. There was a moment of simplicity and intuition to distribute coloring elements, where red is the element of revolution, or uh, the four horses scattering from the imam's clock. There, these details weren't just hard symbols, but I didn't want them to be uh, classical or, or old-fashioned. At the, the conclusion of these paintings, there was the moment of entitling them. And I wouldn't conceal it from you, there were several options and they were discussed uh, with some friends by email. What do you think of this one or that one? Uh, does it speak of the exhibition? The outcome of this discussion was the title Prayer Over the Spear. Here uh, we were choosing between uh, prayer over the spears or, or over the spear or prayers over the spears. There was an accuracy in searching and choosing the title. But from a symbolic aspect, we don't know if the Imam actually prayed uh, over the spear. In a metaphysical notion, the one that we don't understand that what might have happened, but the idea that the Imam was on a spear which happened, we imagine, and here is where the artist comes, uh, in which uh, in which he reads and analyzes the scene in an artistic way and resembles the collective memory. The latter speaks a lot of such tales, which is totally harmless because the larger part of the epic is agreed upon amongst friends and foes. But uh, because uh, because what's done is done, but getting closer to the epic in a personal matter, some might agree and others don't with certain details. And the artist's role is to free the scene from its happening uh, into another dimension. I made uh, use of modernity in this matter by releasing the symbols of this uh, historical, social and religious epic. From, uh, from their places and redistributing the elements. 
For example, the palm tree in several imageries is bent upside down where the tree bends from the top of the image. And in one of the images, there's a tear secreted from the tree. There's a waving movement for the tents and clocks and a movement for swords and arrows that differs from other elements. There are also birds in some of the images and we don't know if we're in a desert except by the existence of the hawk, but there was a pigeon as if it's holding a message. But it's uh, what we've received from Ashura and someone or someone tried to bury this historical moment in the desert sand. No, the message is well received and the proof is that we're talking about this mo moment in art and literature. Alongside the exhibition, there were a group of poems I wrote and uh, were published under the title Hymn uh, for the Holy Body that tackles the Imam himself and his parent in these poetic hymns. And even in these poems, I intend to use other new areas where I used a poem that talked about Al-Hamra castle in Andalusia and described Imam Hussein like the ones talking about Taj Mahal the pyramids and Enkidu that myth where Enkidu took uh, Gilgamesh to the underworld to see the harbors here I asked Enkidu have you seen Al-Abbas's poem have you heard of the ailments of Sayyidah Zainab we should break this notion of time in the world of art I can be modern and historical and to take bits and pieces from the world's civilizations, cultures, philosophies, so it would become combined in a poem and specifically concerning Hussein's epic. Here I say, when I paint, the idea is born directly on the paper without previous planning, so when I draw and distribute the elements, there's a dual mental process that happens, the duality that grants an artistic work of sight. I have the artistic characteristics and there is also balancing elements and historical background of the event. So it's impossible in my imagination to draw a car in the middle of uh, a painting that talks about Ashura. Logically, there isn't, uh, there isn't uh, the sense of or surreal uh, that stands outside the familiar. So I can say that this angle needs balancing, thus I draw part of the arrow or a triangle that symbolizes the arrow. Uh, in other places I feel certain emptiness, so there would be decorations, the Islamic ones, which we build the visual image without affecting the idea behind it. Here, I repeated symbols in paintings. We know that there, are, there aren't many elements in the past Islamic era. There are swords, sand, tents, sky, clouds, and a few lively details uh, like the horse uh, and the clothing decorations. From here, I used to repeat several symbols, but in different distribution as if he's a vocal epic and a repetition of uh, that sorrowful voice but each time the music has a different beat when the horse is the dominant factor in the painting it gives you a special reaction and when the horse is smaller it'll have a different feeling the mind was present here in each literary and artistic uh, achievement the experienced mind accumulated by time practices that produce flawless and sound artworks. Probably in certain works of art, I want to say that I am here. Uh, I want to place an idea different from the mainstream and uh, get distinguished. And this is, speci and this is uh, a speciality in artists and poets. But in the field of Ashura, I'm talking about a matter related to the intellect and the soul and related to what I have mentally accumulated without being at that place. That black color, that anger, that cry, that weep, and that revolutionary relationship. And we have lived in countries known of revolutions and resistance against oppression in all of its forms. From here, I talk about the usage and translation of a spiritual language found inside the, the memory and leaking f from the mind, resisting my ability to break free from from it, if uh, I would reject it, uh, or even if uh, I abuse it because I haven't turned it in a piece of art. From here, these paintings and poems were an implosion of this uh, frustration and sorrow. This uh, 
this is practically I'm making a duty towards uh, this historical event that became part of me to the extent that I say you may not be uh, a Shiite or a Muslim or a believer of any religion uh, or thought but who enters the Husseini Karbala uh, from that angle uh, of consciousness it becomes part of the general enlightenment whether you like it or not this historical moment survived because of this matter and this painting is a translation of those emotions so Karbala was a school not only for crying and uh, weeping though it's a process of memorizing the incident mentally and tackling an issue by its sorrow helps collective and individual memory to, to remember it but in my painting I wanted to say this is my duty O Imam I present it in the effort that I could place. I can write and draw, so practically I write and draw. And I'm, all, I'm also a presenter and conduct uh, discussions, so I host people and talk about this aspect. So in the places where I can fulfill this duty, I will be sure to do so. When the exhibition succeeded, alhamdulillah, and there was a social, humanitarian, and journalistic interaction, there was an unexpected harvest. When uh, I throw a stone inside this pond, I expect, uh, expect the ripples uh, to be new reaches in my artwork. Yesterday on uh, the social media platform Facebook, a teacher has sent on my public profile two paintings that were inspired from the exhibition's paintings, but in a different concept of work. And she wrote that uh, Abdul Halim Hamoud's uh, paintings were referenced, and I'm drawing these paintings in a different style. I talked to one of the mothers a few days ago, and she said that her kid drew one of uh, those paintings so well that I, th that I thought it was yours, and now he's redrawing it again. I'm sure that uh, these types of paintings are found in different houses and with different people and artists that want to rephrase Ashura with this uh, new style. I can say here that uh, I was able to throw the stone. Now the amount of interaction is time and space related, but each one of us must fulfill his duties in his own boundaries. Oh.